What's up, everybody? Tony Lopez here with Alternative Living Spaces. And on this episode, going to be discussing the topic of what RVs get the most demand in terms of nightly rentals on platforms like Outdoorsy and RV Share. Now, this question is really important, especially for those of you that are looking to either rent out an RV that you currently own on these platforms, or maybe you're looking to make an investment and you want to purchase one that you can then rent out. You're definitely going to want to tune in as we're going to be breaking down each type of RV and which ones are the very best. So first off, there's two main categories of RVs you're going to see listed on these platforms. The first one is motorhomes. Motorhomes are drivable RVs. They have an engine within them. Everything's built into one chassis, so you have the ability to drive it and the ability to sleep in it and enjoy it. The other option are trailers. Now, trailers come in a few different categories and a few different types. Now, these are towable. This means that the person renting your trailer likely has an SUV, a truck, or if it's a smaller trailer, maybe they have a car that they're going to be towing it with. Now, what we've noticed, especially where we're located here in Las Vegas, Nevada, is that most of our renters are people that fly in from out of state. Because of that, they don't currently have a vehicle that they're going to be using and towing something with. So more often than not, they're looking for a unit that is drivable. That means they're looking for a motorhome. Now, within the category of motorhomes, there's three main types to consider. There's class A RVs, class B RVs, and class C RVs. Now, class A RVs are the really large motorhome style units. Uh, that you see people driving around, especially when they want to tour the country and maybe view 20 states on a trip. You know, I had grandparents that they ended up buying this type of RV once they retired so that they could tour the U.S. So it is a very cool type of unit. They come in larger sizes, closer to about 30 to even 45 feet is the range that you're going to find for a Class A RV. Um, The next category is Class B RVs. These are typically between 16 and 22 feet in length. And we know them as camper vans. So these are typically your uh, Sprinter vans, your Transits, your Dodge Promasters that have been converted into camping vehicles. Lastly, there's Class C RVs. These are one of my favorites, and these are mid-size drivable RVs. They're typically between 20 to 30 feet in length. They're going to be bigger than your camper vans, but smaller than your Class A motorhomes. Now, in my opinion, if you own any of these, it could do really well as a rental. Going back to my main point that if it is drivable, I think you're going to find that you're going to get a higher demand as people are looking for those types of units. Now, I will say Class A RVs are big. And because 90% of people on platforms like Outdoorsy are first-time RV renters, they may be intimidated by something that large. Uh, For that reason, I think it is best, if you're looking to invest in an RV, to stay in the Class B and the Class C RV range. We currently have five Class B RVs, and they perform incredibly. So this is definitely a category that I would recommend purchasing something in if you're looking to use it as an investment. So I would recommend people investing in units that are in the class B category. Uh, These are units that are very simple to drive and there's a big draw to them. Majority of people on platforms like Outdoorsy are in the millennial type generation and therefore as you'll see on Instagram and TikTok, they're drawn to the camper van style RVs. They're unique, they're cool, and they do a great job at providing a good experience for the trips that they're looking to do. We do have one Class C RV that we manage. It's a Tiffin Wayfarer, and this thing is incredible. It's super nice. I feel like it's a Ritz-Carlton on wheels. It has all the bells and whistles uh, and truly is the nicest thing that we are currently managing. Uh, What I have noticed with it is the nightly rental rate is very good, but it's not that much better than a camper van, which could be about half the price. However, one of the benefits of the Tiffin Wafer is the ability to seat more than two people. The reality is, is there's very few solo trips on Outdoorsy and RV Share. Um, Now there is a good amount of trips that are couples, But there also are a lot of people that are looking for three to four seats total so that they can bring their kids with them as well. So an RV like this is great because it can comfortably sleep four people and it also has four seats. One thing I've noticed with this model of RV is people are also looking to do longer trips with it. Where a camper van could be great for four to seven day trip, something like a Class C RV is much better for someone looking to stay out for two weeks or maybe three weeks traveling and touring the US. Okay, now time to switch gears to the topic of trailers. Now there's a few variety of trailers that you can choose. 
Uh, there's smaller pull-behind trailers. There's fifth-wheel trailers, which are your larger style trailers that could be around 40 feet in length. There's travel trailers, which could be kind of in the middle of both, I mean, around 20, 25 feet. And then there's also the option for truck campers, where there's a truck and they actually put a camper on the back of it, um, which is a trailer attachment technically. So uh, there's a few different options here. Uh, what we have noticed, and we haven't managed all of these options, but we have been in this space and have talked to a lot of people as well. Um, and I can only speak really um, significantly to our market, right? So here in Las Vegas, Nevada, We've noticed that drivable RVs are king. Towable RVs are a little bit more difficult to get rented out. Now, I do think there's exceptions to that rule. If you have a 2022 Airstream, I think you're going to do just fine. Um, I've noticed the Airstreams do perform really well. Um, or if you have something that's just extremely unique and cool and still easy to tow, I think you can perform well. But like I've said before, most of our traffic is people that are flying in. And for that reason, they aren't looking for a towable. They do want a drivable. Now, this can vary by region. I'm sure there's other parts of the country where towables could be more popular. And I have talked to people that have rented towables out in different areas, and they've had good success. Now, I do think some of the same principles will apply, as we talked about with the motorhomes, when it comes to type of RVs and specifically types of trailers that are going to be best to rent out. So because fifth wheel trailers are so large, you can rent them out but it does mean that your target audience is gonna be pretty slim because it's gonna need to be someone that has a heavy duty pickup truck that is able to tow it and someone that feels comfortable enough to also tow that vehicle. Uh, I have a good friend of mine that does rent out his fifth wheel and it does perform well, but I would say it doesn't get nearly the occupancy rates that we are able to get on our class B RVs. We personally are managing a smaller pull behind trailer right now. And this unit is super cool. I love it. It's really cute and it has a lot of bells and whistles on it. Um, and we actually just had our first rental on it this week as I'm recording it. So this is a newer unit to our fleet, but I have noticed it hasn't gotten the demand that our drivable units have gotten. You know, we've had it listed for a couple months and are just now getting it rented out. Um, and honestly thought it was gonna be renting much, much more. So still learning more about these types of units, but we'll say at the very least, uh, like I've mentioned before, you do wanna stay away if you can from the pop-up smaller trailers. I think they're cool units. I think they're a lot of fun. If you own one, go ahead and list it, you'll do good but I'd steer clear of it as an investment as you are gonna have to deal with more wear and tear on something like that. Last category is the truck camper. So uh, this is actually a really cool category, especially with some of the builders that are out there making some very unique off-road type vehicles that are with this kind of a setup. Um, I definitely think that they can perform well, especially because it goes back to the idea that they're drivable. And these drivable RVs definitely perform really well. Uh, so the ability to have everything all in one, especially if it can go off roads, could be a big benefit. I think as long as it's really clean looking, I think you're in good shape to rent it out. You know, at the end of the day, if you own an RV, it's simply worth listing it. Even if it just rents out five days a month, that's additional income in your pocket. Um, if you are looking to do this as an investment, that's where I'd heed more of the advice and guidance that we've shared in this episode and gear yourself towards getting something that is drivable and something that won't be too difficult for people that are first time renters to be able to use. If you'd like to learn more about outdoorsy rentals, I'd encourage you to check out our free PDF link below in the description. It's gonna give you a lot of key insights and helpful information as you're navigating how to do outdoorsy RV rentals. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.